Math 31, I had a question coming out of section 9.3, number 17. And here we were told we had a geometric sequence. And whenever I hear geometric, I think of finding that common ratio R. That's always something important to have. And I always like to have A sub 1 if I can. It's just a, those are two nice numbers to have whenever you're working with a geometric sequence. And if we look at what was given to us, I, I wasn't given an R. And I wasn't given an a sub 1. But I was given, if we highlight it here, I was given a sub 6 and a sub 8. And I know if I start with a sub 6 and I multiply it by r, that would get me to a sub 7. And if I multiply it by r again, that would get me to a sub 8. And so I can connect those two ideas. I can say a sub 6 times r squared is equal to a sub 8. And that's what you see me doing right over here. And so I plug in my a sub 8 value, my a sub r value, oh, excuse me, my a sub 6 value. And then I get this r squared equaling 1 fourth. Now technically, I, I just want to point out, if r squared is 1 fourth, then r could have been plus or minus 1 half, because if I'm going to square root both sides of that equation, the plus or minus would show up. So you could have run this with r equaling negative 1 half. I just opted to show the positive 1 half version. And if we had done um, r squared, excuse me, r being negative 1 half, that would have been fine. I would have just had an alternating sequence at the end. So I'm just going to do the positive 1 half version. And once I find r, right, so at this point I can check off that I found my r value, which is great. And now I'm going to go find a sub 1. And I'm going to use that formula that says a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. And for my n value here, well, and technically here also, I could plug in 6 or 8. And I would opt for 6 or 8 because I know a sub 6 and I know a sub 8. And for me, I always just opt to pick the one with the smaller numbers, just personal preference. Um, I, I'm mixing my words. Personal preference. There we go. Um, I, I use the one with the smaller n value. So once I plug in, you see me putting a sub 6 being 25. I knew my r was 1 half. When I solve that all out, I get that my a sub 1 value is 800. So now I'm looking at, I'm starting at 800. R is 1 half, so that means I just take half of each term, right? So I go from 800 to 400, and then I multiply 400 by a half, right? 400 to 200, so on and so forth. And there are my, my, the first five terms of my geometric sequence. Now, if I had done this with a negative 1 half, just to show you the other version, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work that over here. So let's say we had done a sub 6 equaling a sub 1 times negative 1 half to the fifth, well, if I had done that, I would have had a 25 here, again, equaling a sub 1 times negative 1 half to the fifth. And when I solve for a sub 1, I would have gotten negative 800, which would have been fine. Now, keep in mind, if a sub 1 is negative 800 and r is negative 1 half, then my sequence would have started at negative 100, then it would have gone to positive 400, then negative 200, then positive 100, and then negative 50. So it would have had the same absolute value, if, if you will, but I would have had an alternating sequence, right? I went negative, then positive, then negative, then positive, then negative, where over here it was just positive, 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 positive. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.